Welcome to the adventures of Baron von Munchausen. I am the only person that has actually played this game before. I have... Oh, That's yes. We, that. we have liquor already on the table. Wait. Where did Bob? Do you guys have actual alcohol? Yeah, do you need some? I can't drink. But, like, I'm... That's not... You just want to smell it's it? It's not... I can't drink either, Maureen. Hop high. More for me. All right, this is already... I'm going to... I'm going to... Go, Pat, on. go. I'm, I'm, don't I'm let gonna, it spin out of I'm going to start moderating this. I've got a dad voice and a teacher voice, and you don't want me to use both of them at the same time. <laughs> People will die. What happens is we are all, I need you to use your imaginations here, we are all fabulous adventurers who are gathered in a drinking establishment of high class to recount adventures from our fabulous lives. This is effectively an improvisational storytelling game. Um, we will each create a character which consists only of a name. And I've told these people that, so what we might do, right, so we can refer to each other appropriately, I steal placards from conventions I go to. <laughs> so somebody could be Robin Hobb if they would like to be, or we could, no, Will Wheaton is mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, hold on. That's getting tweeted. So you can turn it inside out and you can write, I brought some markers, you can write your name and I know this is gonna work against you. Yours is like 18 yeah, can, I, can I go first? Yes, you can go first. I don't have a marker. I've got a marker. You'd think that I'd I think it. we're already <laughs> playing this really well. <laughs> oh, I and get to be Pat Roth. No, you just turn him inside out. No. This is not rockets. This is not the hard part of the yeah, game, people. <laughs> so, right while they're yeah. scribbling oh, frantically, yep. I'll explain to you how this game is gonna work. I will turn to the person on my left and I will say, so, how is it that you, and then I will give her a story prompt, something suitably outrageous. She will then tell a story and occasionally her companions might choose to question the veracity of one of her statements. Uh, what we're gonna do is effectively throw grit into her narrative gears. Um, and again, because theoretically we're in a pub, if uh, you'd have like pennies in front of you and you'd push a penny towards the other person and say, and say, how is it that you managed to take over the pirate ship even though you are deathly allergic to parrots? I'm so glad you mentioned that. <laughs> As it happens. Okay. And so because she incorporated it, she gets this. You know, if she really didn't want to put up with my screwing up her story, she could say, she could put one of her pennies in and say, oh, I'm afraid that you've misheard. You know, it just shuts me down. And now that can go back and forth in a little bit of a bidding war, but because we each only have like three tokens, that's gonna be over pretty quickly. Wow, these are nice. Okay. Yeah, this is cool. This yeah, is I know I'm carrying around my own merch. I'm not proud of that, but <laughs> I didn't have like a dozen, you know, like two dozen pennies in my pocket, so. They're still warm. <laughs> okay, so our names are... Oh, sorry. Yeah, let's introduce ourselves. I am the Baroness Von Bluch. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am Lord, Lord Archduke the Third, the Fourth. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was born Lord Archduke the Third, the Fourth of that name, and then I was made a lord. Will, will your son be the third, the fourth, the fifth? I'm sorry? Never mind. Ah. <laughs> no, I, I, yeah. Okay. Sure. I, <laughs> yes, and. <laughs> <laughs> I am Lord Stinkington Fuzzlebutt upon Thames. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm doing an accent. <laughs> I am Baroness Wilhelmina of Wheatonia. I'm not very good at voices. <laughs> I'm Marshal Inspector Mandrake Horatio Don Cesar de Porpington of Gelderland. <laughs> Does everybody like the movie Knight's Tale? I will be 
uh, Rear Admiral Rothfuss. <laughs> Not like, don't, don't make it weird. <laughs> so. Whatever uh, can you mean? <laughs> can, you, can you turn that a little bit so I, I can address you as befits your station? That would be my lady. Lady. My I lady. believe he was referring to his buttocks, by the way. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Lord Stinkington. <laughs> Milady. Yes. Would you be so good as to tell us how it is that you actually rescued Catherine the Great oh. from slavery <laughs> while discovering the source of the Nile? That was quite the grand adventure, I'll tell you. <laughs> now, we had begun on the Nile in one of those delicious paddle boats, it is, you know, just paddled by, oh, a few workers. <laughs> mm. uh, charming people, so magnificent and noble. And as we were uh, rowing upon the Nile and I was sunning myself, we heard the cries, the cries of a woman in distress, and most alarming, they were in Russian. Mm. <laughs> now, it is fortunate that I have spent some time in Russia. It was a very delightful time, but that's a different story. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, of course. Are you quite all right, madam? Are you having the oh, vapors? Yes. yes. Are you remembering Russia too? <laughs> I don't choose to recall it. Oh, I'm offended. <laughs> so, there we were with our, our workers, and we hear these cries, and so, of course, we banked our vessel and proceeded to approach the place where the cries were coming from. It was the most magnificent pyramid I've ever seen. It had jewels encrusted on every single stone, and not that I paused to consider their worth with the pitiless cries that were coming from within, but I would say that there was perhaps the treasury of Portugal at the time, which was actually significant, not so much now. <laughs> so we enter in this pyramid, and the cries echo, echo. Echo. <laughs> we proceed down the corridor, and there, standing in front of us, is a jackal-headed man with Catherine the Great in a compromising position. Now, how is it, Baroness? Because as a statesman, I have heard that she was quite uncompromising. <laughs> Politically, she was quite steadfast in her beliefs. Well, you, you are assuming that the compromising position was Catherine's. It was, in fact, the jackal-headed man. Oh. <laughs> I believe the children say that you've got served, sir. <laughs> she had him, spread eagle, raised above her on ropes. I understand that this is something that she was quite fond of. I'm still waiting to hear about the compromising position. <laughs> <laughs> well... Catherine the Great, you know, was a queen and an empress, and she had a quite a nice scepter. <laughs> <laughs> now, of course, I could only assume that she was being forced into this, not knowing Catherine at the time, as I do now. So, I proceeded to think that I was helping her by loosing the bonds. And then things became somewhat complicated. 
did you know that there are vials of essential oils all through these Egyptian tombs? I did not know that, actually. Yes, and they do make it quite easy to slip out of situations. So, <laughs> there was nothing to be done as I was trying to help Catherine lose her bonds, but of course, because they were quite tight and I could not find the keys, but to take the oils and lather them a across her body, which she let forth cries that could only make me assume that she had been tortured <laughs> grievously, grievously. <laughs> Anubis, <laughs> meanwhile, was still bound somewhat. We do like a jackal man on a leash. So, <laughs> Are you quite all right, dear? Yes, I'm... <laughs> I, I feel like I've been to Russia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. No, Russia was much more exciting. I should like to hear a bit about Russia at some point. Oh, yes. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. I've turned into Sean Connery. <laughs> Oh, that's fine. I think I'm going to stick with it for the time being. <laughs> so, after having gotten Catherine completely lathered, we were able to slide her bonds from her. And the, the scepter at this point, again, also being quite slippery, we somewhat lost our grip upon it, and it approached, shall we say, Anubis in ways that he seemed to enjoy. This story is Fifty Shades of Great. <laughs> God damn it. So I still wanted to help Catherine escape because I thought that was the situation. Uh, and, and thinking, he was a jackal-headed man, what does one do with a scepter and a jackal-headed man? I have no idea. <laughs> well, my dear, it's the simplest thing in the world. You simply throw it and he goes to play fetch. Mm. So Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> so we did that, and Catherine apparently was quite taken with my abilities with the oils, essential oils, and she followed me, uh, and we raced back to the ship, and we were there uh, able to reunite with the vessel and our um, workers, and, uh, and then continue on up the Nile, where Catherine and I were able to discover the um, fountainhead. Fascinating. Milady, I must express frustration <laughs> of multiple sorts. Uh, primarily, however, that uh, we've begun with you, and now we must move on to uh, others who cannot possibly be <laughs> as enjoyable as, as your uh, storytelling abilities <laughs> turn out to have been. I feel as if an intelligent uh, course of action would have been to have ended there. <laughs> because we cannot possibly move up uphill from where we have found ourselves. Is the running away still yeah, an option? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lord, Lord, Archduke, the third, the fourth, and I are terrified. <laughs> My dear, it's the simplest thing in the world. You simply must tell me about your adventures with the puppy and the unicorn and the farting. <laughs> <laughs> and the farting. And the... That is a good tale. 